Welcome to another episode of Grow Your Life. I'm Jason Scott Matoya, and in this Listen to Learn episode, we're talking with Soriana Bravo. Soriana, say hello. Hello. <laughs> Glad <laughs> to have you here with us. Um, Soriana is a multilingual global communications specialist with analytical and strategic copywriting talents in cross cultural and B2B sectors. She's also the senior associate editor, editor at the Foundation for Economic Education. So she is definitely a marketing and PR uh, genius, but instead of diving into those experiences, we're actually going to talk about societies and failing nations. She's the author of a book called Que Le Paso a Venezuela, or in English, What's Happened to Venezuela, which takes a historical dive into the country of her origin and the factors that led to the fall of the country as a richly resourced and independent nation. This discussion will explore a little bit about her story, what happened in Venezuela, and what we Americans can learn as we face our own societal unrest, now exasperated by the pandemic. All right, Soriana, I'll let you take it from here. Tell us a little about your background and how that intersects with Venezuela, and, uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, thank you, Jason, for the invitation. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to be here with you. Um, well, I, uh, I, I grew up, I, I was born and, and, and raised in Venezuela, and I studied journalism. Um, mm. I, my first job uh, happened to be at the American Embassy in Caracas, okay. where I, I noticed fa- first from her firsthand that the media was not so well prepared uh, in terms of economics. My boss used to complain a, l- a lot about that. So they asked me to organize a small seminar uh, where we took some other journalists and so in, 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 in any way, I just noticed that I needed more education. I needed to, mm-hmm. to, to get my, my master's. So I started working towards uh, getting uh, accepted and uh, I got accepted at the uh, George, George Washington uh, University okay. and came to, to, to do my master's in international affairs. Yeah. Um, but I was working by then when I arrived in 1997, I, w- I had worked for the oil company, the, the biggest uh, oil company. Venezuela's co- economy was basically oil. Seventy uh, percent mm. of, of the economy came from uh, from oil revenues. Yeah. So that company was very important. It was very well organized. Um, it was uh, it was it was a very good corporation. It had a, a lot of American in, you know, yeah. American influence. Um, so once I here, uh, once I was here, um, Chavez came to power in 1999. Mm. Okay. And he so said, it's two years after you had left, right? Uh, two years after I yeah. left, yes. Uh, he said, "I want Venezuela to run through the river of of uh, of, of uh, the happiness that the Cuban people had been." Yeah. So when I when I saw that, I was like, "Okay, it's not good." So I decided to stay here in the U.S. Um, and um, and that's how. And I, did you have family still there at the time when you made that decision? I, I did, yeah. My mother was there, um, yeah. still there. And yeah. um, it, it, once uh, Chavez took over, it just, just became, it was just a big downslide. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I guess to, to contrast it a little bit before we dive into that, you know, just growing up there, living there and before you moved, mm-hmm. um, what was it like? I mean, was it? Venezuela pretty- was, uh, was very wealthy. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, it, I mean, it was very wealthy because they had a lot of resources, not only oil, but other minerals and other gold and other resources. And, and people will repeat that. Oh, we're very wealthy. We're very wealthy. There's so much soil and, you know, underneath the, the soil. Uh, we're wealthy. And, and it's true. I was, uh, and, and, and they were mobility. Like my, my parents come from very humble origins and they were able to, you know, be uh, middle class. And we live in a very nice uh, apartment, and I went to private schools, and everything. I mean, there was a big disparity. It's true, social. Uh, there was a big, uh, 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 you know, a lot of people that were poor. Uh, yeah. They were neglected. That that was true. And but there was a big middle class that you know there was mobility. People who were poor and could go to yeah. schools. The, the, the universities were public, um, you could have lunch for, you know, very little money. Uh, anyway, there was mobility, there was possibilities, there was, there was money, there was industry. Once uh, Chavez came, came in power, people immediately were scared 
that they were, you know, their, their companies were be taken over and, and that happened. So mm. people left, he cr uh, crippled, uh, you know, the small industry and the economy started collapsing. That's when people, a lot of exodus, you know, exodus happened. A lot of m millions left uh, mm. and they're all spread all over the world. So I guess dive a little bit more deeper into that. What, what specifically was it that drove them away? Was it just out of fear of, of losing what, uh, be, or being taken over or kind of get into right. the detail? Uh, he started, uh, socialism is all about regulations, no? Okay. He started, uh, he started implementing a bunch of laws that were not, the, 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 you know, the, the small industry could not, you know, would not to tolerate, would not support, would okay. not sustain. Essentially, and it was that essentially was a power move? Is that what was happening? To take control uh, of those? Yes, anti they were okay. taking control and they were demanding uh, more money for the employees, for example, higher, okay. uh, ha higher salaries. Uh, they were demanding uh, a bunch of uh, uh, other ways, health care, payment of health care, a bunch of other uh, fees and, and payments that really, uh, and then they started controlling the prices. Uh, okay. like, like, for example, if you were producing, I don't know, corn, uh, they will they will uh, uh, control the price of corn, so you were like stuck. Okay, how I, am I going to pay uh, my my employees more, and I'm going to be able to sell more of the corn because it's there's a control over over the price. I mean, there's a yeah uh, a rule. So the the price wasn't driven by marketplace supply and demand. It was essentially dictated by the leader the leadership of the Venezuela regime. Right. It was major central planning. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, uh, Chavez being a military with a you know military background, he was very good at planning. So he basically started uh, planning the economy, everything, and and yeah, it's it, it cripples the freedom of, of people to succeed and and to make money and to move and, and all that. Um, so yeah, there was and every day um, I I I went back for a year in 2006, uh, and I just felt that every day there was some other industry that he was controlling. Even mm -hmm. the casinos, uh, the casinos at some point were like, you know, some some kind of entertainment for older people. And it, it just he one day he just said, yeah, no more casinos. You know, they're they're taking over. They're we're taking over. Yeah. So every day there was a new industry. There was a new industry that he was taking over. There was a new industry that he was regulating. So people were losing their jobs. And when, when you don't have a job, you have to go where you, you can find one. Yeah. And that's how people left. That's how people, professionals, engineers, mm -hmm. uh, you name it, left uh, to Australia. They're now in Australia, in Colombia, elsewhere, mm. or all over the, the world. And so the people that were innovative or creators or entrepreneurs and that they they essentially left and they took that innovation with them and then the people that stayed were essentially those that were willing to comply to these changes right uh were trapped the in point, them to the point that they had to wear you know certain kind of t-shirt like uh he he chose uh, uh a red as a okay. color so he they, every all the uh, public employees will have to wear you know, the red t-shirt, uh, they couldn't, you know, uh, uh, say anything against anybody. I mean, everybody, it's collectivism taking over yeah. individualism. You are no mm. longer free to express yourself and, and, and be who you are or be creative or, 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 or want uh, to be more yeah. uh, and better. Uh, you, are, you have to comply and you have to think and act like everybody else. Otherwise, yeah. you'll be punished, fired, you name it. Mm. And so it sounds like, you know, not to make light of it, but the worst micromanaging boss ever societally, right? It's societally, yeah. everything being controlled um, from the top down with individuals not having any say in that they're essentially rope being made into robots to essentially follow, press, you know, button one or two, right? Is right. that what I'm hearing? And not, and not lightly because they would go, you know, to, to, to violence. Uh, they will take, uh, they will persecute people uh, and take them to jail or even, you know, many people were killed, have been killed. And did it, did it start up? Did it start that violent or did it start out more smaller and then it grew into jailing people and more violent? Uh, it has always been violent, Jason. Yeah. The, the, even the beginnings, um, uh, 
1989, before Chavez uh, came to power, um, Fidel Castro went to, to Venezuela. And, and, and Fidel Castro from Cuba. Now, Cuba and Venezuela, Cuba has, is very much the culprit of, or, or, or the, 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 one of the origins of all this, no? Um, Cuba, uh, you know, as you know, is a communist uh, socialist regime and uh, for have been for many years and they always wanted to they Fidel Castro always had an eye on Venezuela because he needed the revenues you know revenues mm. from somewhere right and and the, the Soviet Union was probably not supplying that those revenues so he had always uh, uh, an eye on Venezuela which was the richest country in the whole South America Okay. Um, so in 1989, he came, uh, uh, Rafael, uh, Carlos Andres Perez uh, invited him uh, uh, to his inaugural ceremony. And it, it, apparently, uh, Fidel Castro brought, brought with him a bunch of, uh, uh, you know, everything needed for uh, national riots. In mm. 1989, in February, uh, soon after that ceremony, the whole nation, uh, the whole country, it started like uh, at the same time, uh, 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 riots in several several cities. Uh, it was in, in people, socialist, uh, you know, uh, people, uh, social um, theorists were saying, no, this is, uh, this is just a social movement. It just started spontaneously. No, I mean, looking back, it never did. It was all planned. Mm. Uh, it was all planned by, by Fidel Castro and, and, the, and the communists. So anyway, um, Cuba had very much uh, uh, sought the deterioration and, and took over the, the takeover of Venezuela. Yeah. And he was very much, uh, Fidel Castro, was very much the mentor behind okay. uh, of uh, Hugo Chavez. And he was all behind all, all this planning uh, mm -hmm. because it, it is a lot of planning. It's the, the, the crippling of freedom. Um, yeah. Now, if, if, if Chavez didn't take over to 97, but he was involved in the late 80s, what was he doing from during that decade before he took over? What was he his was role? very much preparing a meeting with uh, with Fidel Castro. He he tried to uh, coup d'etat. Uh, okay, 19... so he tried to take over twice before that. Twice before in in nineteen eighty nineteen ninety two he took uh, he tried twice. So he but he was failed in, in those two attempts. He he failed in those two attempts. Uh huh. And he was in jail for a little bit okay. for several years. Uh huh. Uh, and then he was released. Uh, that was a big mistake, <laughs> historical <laughs> mistake. He was released, and then when he uh, he he came into the uh, presidential race, he said, "No, I'm capitalist. I'm not. I'm not a communist. I, uh, you know, I'm going to support. Uh, I'm going to support uh, entrepreneurship. I'm going to support capitalism. Yeah. You know, like uh, yeah, he sounded very normal. He he." you know, took away his military, you know, uh, suit and just, just was acting very businesslike. He lied. And that's yeah. what also the, the, he, he came to power like that, you know, lying mm -hmm. to people. And that's the same way came, that Fidel came to power. Uh, he never said, Fidel Castro never said, yes, I'm going to be communist. I'm going to lie with Russia. No, he, he said, you know, I'm going to, you know, uh, it's, it's good. It's, I'm not a communist. Yeah. So they both lied, and I, and I do believe that they're both uh, psychopaths. Mm -hmm. um, and so did, I guess, uh, wh how did the people perceive them? Were they, were they duped by Chavez, or did they know something was yes. off and they just didn't, couldn't do anything about it? No, they were duped. Uh, he had a charisma like, like I've never seen before. Uh, he, the way he talked, he was so convincing. The once uh, I was, uh, I was in, at home uh, in Venezuela, uh, and I just watched him over on TV, and I just, I just felt like he, he was almost, you know, in, in my living room. Yeah. His presence, his charisma was very powerful. Yeah. And if he was convincing me almost, you know, from the TV. Uh, I cannot imagine how people felt in his presence. You know, he mm -hmm. it was very, very powerful charisma, very powerful presence. And, and he wrote, he would read a lot and he would tell people his, uh, history. He distorted history. Yeah. He would, uh, he would uh, recite, uh, you know, uh, some from the Bible. Uh, he, 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 he read the, the Bible, even though he was not. Mm. Uh, and, and is Venezuela, does it have a lot of Christians? Is it Catholic? Is it Protestant? Okay. Is it 
that's another problem that I, I write in my book about uh, because religion was, uh, um, you know, was uh, neglected uh, okay. from early on, very, very much, uh, very much before Chavez came to power. And so Venezuelans are, are in name Christians, Catholics, ma ma the majority is Catholic, but they were not practi practicing Catholics. Okay. So it was all form versus uh, substance, you know? Okay. And I think that was, uh, that's what, that, that was the big mistake. People just saw the image, you know, the form, the, the, what, what Chavez said, but then they, they didn't realize that, hey, he killed people. And those yeah. were the task, the attempt, uh, people died. Uh, yeah. So, and he tried to use the violence to, to get into power uh, before yeah. being elected. Yeah. So, so how naive of, you know, of the, the, the regular people to believe that, yeah, he was bringing a change. That's what he promised, change. Uh, and Fidel Castro did the same way in Cuba. So yeah, people were duped. Uh, yeah. You know, that's what uh, psychopaths do. Uh, they are big actors. And one of the, the one of the main persons who studied a psychopath, uh, Robert, um, I'll, I'll remember the name in a, in a little bit. Uh, he he said that the psychopath, the normal psychopath, the poor ones that that didn't yeah. go to school, they end up in prison. Uh, but the ones who have a little bit more education or have a, they end up sometimes in politics mm. because they they are so uh, charming. They're so charismatic. They speak. They can speak yeah. so well. They can do people. That, and they're willing to do things that others aren't. To, yeah. Right. Right. So I guess how would you define a psychopath? What 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 does that mean to you? Uh, it's a person that has. It's not aligned internally, like thoughts. You know heart, intentions, behavior, it's not aligned. So they can say things that, you know, very, you know, they're very convincing. They can promise you things or say things that are really, they're not going to follow, follow through or they're, they're not real. And yeah. they're just, uh, they don't care. You know, they don't care about hurting people. And that's what the uh, dissonance, co uh, cognitive dissonance okay. comes in. Because people say, no, it can be true. How can somebody mm. do that? How can a president uh, would have harmed their, their yeah. own people, their own citizens? Uh, but you and know, so I, so is I that a, almost a denial that that there is evil and that someone could be that evil? Yes. Like, yes. Like it's almost like we can't accept it because it's something that it's so difficult to accept, right? Right. It's so difficult. That's why you're like, okay, no, it can be. It, they they cannot be such evil. And actually, politicians in Venezuela, they just couldn't figure it out what, what was happening. Uh, yeah. And because, yeah, I mean, how would you think? I mean, presidents are elected to just lead the people for being better and, and having more. But this man just went and, and really said, I'm going to destroy this nation. Uh, and, and, he, and he achieved it. But now, do you think my, for, from his point of view, it was... It was I'm going to get as much for myself at the cost of the nation, or do you think right. he was intentionally destroying the nation? Like I want to that, destroy this. That was what's it, what what you first said. I'm gonna um, extract everything, and and then I don't care the co consequences for my people. Right, because yeah. psychopaths they don't have empathy. They don't know that they, they couldn't care about people. Yeah. They just want to satisfy their own needs and their or their own goals and purposes. Mm. So that's that's what psychopaths are. And yeah. he did. He became one of the wealthiest men in the world. Uh, yeah. uh, during his period while he was in power, uh, the oil prices went up, and and he made fortunes. Just yeah. fortunes. And all his people, the 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 the, the, the surrounding. Uh, elite um, became very powerful and very rich mm -hmm. and they're living in Miami and they're living in Paris. Mm. So uh, essentially he, he padded the pockets of a lot of other elites and people with power and influence right. and those and, people and benefited even at the cost of their own people. Th th there you go. And all saying we are for, we are working for the poor. We are, you know, on, on the poor side, we're helping people uh, who doesn't have uh, the, the, haven't had the, 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 the privilege or uh so they were all saying yeah we're social driven we want to help the masses we're here yeah. for you uh we're you know 
And in 1997, when he took, took over, was it hopeful? Like everyone's like, wow, things are going to get better. How, how did people feel in that moment? Yes, people were at that moment uh, in the 90s. Uh, uh, let me back up. In 1989, when, when Fidel Castro visited uh, Venezuela, there was almost a thousand uh, intellectuals, uh, that meaning uh, journalists, uh, professors, college professors, uh, actress, actresses, uh, you know, sociologists, like all the intellectual elite uh, wrote a welcoming letter to Fidel Castro. Oh, wow. And so you get the picture, the media, the, 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 the people who were running the media, the people who were running the, the colleges were, were, were communist. And mm -hmm. like looking back, I'm like, okay, what were they thinking? They didn't know what, you know, in Cuba, they, they repress people. They, they, you know, are vigilant, always, you know, behind people trying to see what they say, what they think they cannot be. I mean, didn't they know that people were like throwing themselves to the ocean to just reach Miami mm -hmm. uh, to, to get away uh, that, that repression? Well, they were welcoming in, in Venezuela. So at that time in the 90s also, there was a big soap opera that was very popular for estas calles that talk about corruption and all that. So by the time when Chavez came to power, people were so desperate, like they were so, they so much wanted to change. They said they had been to main parties and they were like, okay, let's look for something different. And, and Chavez was a very, um, you know, tall, handsome, and, and, and it was a military with a military background and people thought, oh, he's going to fix this problem. He's going to fix this mess. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I, what I, you know, I, why did I write my book? Because I was questioning, can a man have done all this? You know, I, so I started digging into the history. It, essentially, you had this question, like, how did this happen? Is that what you right. mean? Yeah. yeah. Basically, what happened? You know, what yeah. happened? How, a country that was so rich. I mean, really, I, I grew up going to parties where whiskey was always, you know, mm -hmm. part of, a, yeah. you know, everybody was wearing gold, um, jewelry. Uh, so yeah, we, we were just very wealthy. And, and anyway, uh, what happened? And I come to find out that, that this was a long process yeah. of social ideas that got into the minds of, like, of, of, of and when did that start? When did those ideas start? Um, well, basically, uh, b back in the uh, in the thirties, forties, mm. uh, the man that started democracy in Venezuela had his uh, background or his origins in communism. So he was at the end. He was kind of a light communist, um, and and he he you know basically they're starting the socialization of the whole uh, education of the whole country. And we were like, I grew up uh, with uh, people celebrating Labor Day as May 1st. Okay. That was uh, a Russian uh, celebration. That was a communist celebration of, oh, okay. uh, of, uh, of the Labor Day. So, you know, I noticed a uh, wow, uh, a lot of, a lot of um, communism creeped in and, 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 and that with the, the fact that religion was also, uh, you know, outcasted. I mean, religion was yeah. smart. Um, so basically, in the end, when Chavez came, he had the feel all uh, uh, landed. You know, he had the feel yeah. already. Was, the stage was set. Was set. Yeah, was set. And socialism became, became the religion you know, uh, uh, they, they actually, and so what, what is, what did socialism, what does that mean in terms of Venezuela? I mean, you gave some examples earlier, but you know, we right. talk the word socialism thrown around so much in our country in America that, right. you know, you know, I, it's kind of hard to know what is, what is it? And so I'd be curious to know what, how you sort of look at it and how it specifically manifested in Venezuela. Right. Well, socialism basically is, uh, it's, um, uh, it's not, it's against or the opposite of freedom of, uh, of industry or freedom of yeah. free uh, markets, free markets, right? So controlled so, markets. Right. So in capitalism, you have free markets, you have competition, you have liberty, freedom. In socialism, you don't, it's all not, you know, it's all planning. So um, we had that uh, before when Chavez came, came to power. He started, uh, he started, you know, taking over all the industries, for example, uh, telecom, uh, 
oil and gas already was was there, but it, it, it he intensified that. So he took like for example the revenues, the oil and gas revenues to to have social programs, and also socialism. Also, it's the enlargement of the government. It's mm -hmm. enlargement of uh, social programs. Okay. Um, and 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 really the crippling of liberties, right? Uh, property rights. No, uh, you have the right. Uh, to rent or buy or sell at whichever price you want, whenever you want it, in your terms. You have, you, if you want employees, five employees at five dollars, or, or or ten employees at ten. I mean, it's it's your to your discretion, right? Yeah. And you're gonna and you're gonna define your own your own uh, success in socialism. No, because you know everybody has to be equal. And for example, I remember seeing Chavez talk about the glass of water. He glass, had a glass of water uh, while, while he was talking and he said, you know what? It's not fair that I have a glass of water. Everybody else should have a glass of water. So it's like no VIP for anybody. We have to be mm. you know, equal. Even and though he's literally being the VIP. He, he was a Beyonce VIP. Yeah. And he's, he was talking about, yeah, well, if you if you're poor and you're 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 hungry, you can go and steal, but mm -hmm. uh, you know. And he was talking about poverty, but his watches were you know expensive and his suit yeah. were expensive, and he was basically running the nation, you know, it's, 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 uh, sending out checks to people with no control. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I mean that was that was the the money that came from that that belo money belonged to to the the whole nation, not himself. Yeah. And he can distribute it like like that, but he was winning votes. Yeah. And it, it, socialism is all about lying and deceiving people and saying yes, you're gonna be, we're gonna be all equal. You're gonna be, it's gonna be beautiful and better in the future. And with that. He, he just, you know, kept the promise, you know, we're going to be great. We're going to be a superpower. Uh, it's going to, the future is going to be bright. And let's yeah. forget about the past. The yeah. past is no good. So, for example, Columbus's uh, uh, statues were uh, t torn down. In uh, Venezuela? In Venezuela, yes. Other statues um, too or just Columbus? Uh, the Columbus, m mostly the Columbus because there was a, uh, it's a rejection to the past. It's a rejection to tradition. Whatever okay. it was, it has to go because socialism creates a new reality. Okay. It's a new reality. And sometimes the reality is just fake. Yeah. Um, for example, I remember him talking about uh, there was in Caracas, there's a river that it's really, uh, you know, bad shape. It's really dirty. And he promised that he was going to clean that river, that we were going to be able, Venezuelans were going to be able to go and have like a pool in that river. Uh, it was gonna be, it was gonna be so clean. And it, that, was, that was not possible. It was, but many million, I'm sure many millions of dollars were pouring, pouring into that project. That was not, no good, it was mm. not realistic. So, was, so you talked about lying and stuff. I mean, have you heard the term gaslighting? Gaslighting, that? yes, Is that's that... what psychopaths do, yeah. Okay. So he's essentially just stringing them along with, with no intention of actually, um, or even getting con people convincing that he's the good one and they're the, they're the problem. <laughs> right. Well, he also divided the nation. Uh, divided okay. The, yeah. And how, how, what do you, in what way? Like uh, against people against each other? People against each other. Yes. And as the Bible says, no, no house can stand divided, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a there's some reference along those lines. He divided the people so he will talk about us and them, and us meaning the people who was uh, you know who were the Chavistas who were pro Chavez, okay, who would support the socialism and, and all these ideas, and the ones that are, were you know against these ideas were the them you know were the yeah. and he had all kinds of names, okay. Uh, so it was a public shaming. It was a, a creation of list. Where if okay. you, your name was in that list, you could couldn't find a job, or you couldn't mm. get a scholarship, or your kids couldn't get their scholarship. So you and did were, anyone you know, like anyone in your family, get suffer from that type of outcast? Uh, well, I remember a, a former a coworker uh, from yeah. Bebe, the old company. He signed one of those uh, documents that were collecting against the, the uh, Chavez, 
And so his name showed up in, in that list and he couldn't find a job. So he was like, run, I saw him on the street. I met him on the street. And he said, I've been, you know, I don't know. He was know. homeless on the street? He was or, uh, not homeless, just, but he was just roaming around, I guess, yeah. selling things, you know, formal, informal yeah. uh, market, uh, selling things here and there, just when he had a very nice, you know. Oh, okay, job. yeah. Uh, but he had been like that for many years because he, he had been in that list, so to yeah. speak. So, um, so yeah, it's uh, once you, you are uh, tag or your mark, it's, you know, yeah. Now, what? How do you? So, you know, around late '90s and the and the early 2000s, I remember we had our own elites, certain politicians and celebrities. They were going to Venezuela. They were saying how great this new uh, this new socialist country was, and how great Chavez was, and they took pictures, and you know, the media ran with it. So. What what was going on there is, tell us tell us it, what your thoughts it, are. It's all it was all image, Jason. It as I said, it's image over form. It's image. It's lie over reality or truth. But was um, he essentially swindling them, and they just they buy it through? They probably get were getting money. Yeah, they were yeah. probably getting paid just to, for the sponsorship. I mean, that was important because you know the U.S. Was not having the U.S. and Venezuela were not having a good relationship. Just and having the sponsorship of a Hollywood uh, uh, celebrities was big. You know, people believe in that. So they were saying, you know, uh, Champagne, I think, was one of them. And and uh, yeah, the, 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 those are, are what they call a full celebrity, something like that. Full mm -hmm. idiots, they call it. Okay. So um, they were just being used, and and they may or may not even have realized it. Yeah, and he used a lot of people, not, a, not only a lot of people, but a lot of nations. Uh, like uh, he would pay them, you know, or give them a, uh, free oil or, or discounted oil just to have the, the, the you know, the, the sponsorship. So when he was at an international organization and there was a dispute over something, these, these countries uh, will vote and support Venezuela. So he's essentially bribing them to get. He, yeah, uh, yeah, he, he, was, he was essentially bribing them. And so what was our country how how did we interface with venezuela over this period of time okay uh the relationship with venezuela was very good uh prior to chavez uh they yeah. actually uh, the us was the main and principal client oil 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 okay. client so it was very good i i mean i worked with the american Emb at the american embassy um but after Chavez, uh, Chavez created uh, America as the enemy, you know, the, the okay. America was the enemy. So he will talk about, oh, they're going to invade us. They're mean, they're bad. So it was always like he created a monster that he could blame mm. everything. And did people buy that? Uh, yes. The, yeah. the people, people will buy everything, you know, from yeah. a strong leader. So, so I, I talked to the, when I went back, uh, as I told you for a year, uh, I talked to the, the chauffeur, uh, the, the driver of, uh, of the, of the amp ambassador, and he said he had, they had been thrown tomatoes or, you know, food at, the, at their car. Um, so that was, I was like, I couldn't believe it because the American ambassador was always respected. I mean, the American embassy, yeah. uh, you know, the U.S. had always been respected. Mm. Um, and what year was that? Do you remember? Uh, well, that was, uh, you know, during the Chavez periods, like in the, in 2000s. Early 2000s. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah it's, it was the, so the socialist idea or the communist idea that America, you know, being the land of freedom and, and, and main capital, yeah. biggest economy of the world was bad, you know, yeah. so mm. we are better. We, we, we're going to take yeah. over. They're mean. They have. Okay. So better. you. Yeah. So uh, you said the last time you visited was around 2006. Is that right? Which is uh, right? yes. I was there for a longer time in 2006. Okay. So what happened from that point to in the the ten years that followed, and then when things really just fell apart? Okay. Kind of walk us through that. Yes, socialism. It's a very slow process. Uh, I think okay. I, I I said that before. Um, and you know, people didn't realize what was happening. They like I remember when I went back. I'm like, okay, this is this is so strange. You know, it's falling down. That there's a 
whole net of communism uh, underneath, but people wouldn't realize it. It was so slow. It's mm -hmm. like a like a, a, a frog cooking. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and so people didn't realize, but Chavez was doing the repression uh, mm -hmm. from politicians. Uh, he, he was doing the, the repression on the economy. And uh, he died in, in 2010, 2010, if, okay. I, if I recall correctly. And, and by then, the, the oil prices had fallen. So okay. Venezuela had less money. And it's all about resources. When he had the money, when the oil prices were, were high, uh, you know, he was able to distribute them and, and, and create the social programs and, and people were happy and uh, supporting okay. him. Once the, the resources became scarce, that's when uh, things yeah. fell apart. And that's when actually he, he died. Oh, okay. So Maduro okay. took over and there has not, you know, Venezuelans have not seen the best way to get rid of him. Is he um, worse than Chavez or the same? Um, he's worse. Uh, is it the same? It's the same mechanism. Is the same repression mechanism? Is the same, you know, uh, just the lead have all the means and the rest just have, you know, all the, uh, just the, the remaining pieces. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there has not been any any progress whatsoever. It's it, we. I don't see the end. Uh, you know, of, of the tunnel, of the road. Um, but there's less people who believe in 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 Maduro, who believe in Chavez or socialism. But it, you know, r right now, how do we how do we uh, recover from such a disaster? I mean, there's people who have no food. Um, the, the inflation is so high. One thing that really led also to this crisis is even before Chavez is that, as I, as I said, the state grew so much and the state, the government uh, got so much in debt that uh, they started printing money, uh, uh -huh. the U.S. have been doing uh, recently. And so the infl inflation was really bad. Immense. Yeah, it was in, in, in really bad. And people had less and less. And right now, they're just trying to get what, what, whatever it is, like find whatever they, yeah. they have. And they can really not fight because they have thrown, people have thrown themselves to the street fighting for a change of regime. But they have, you know, just faced repression, the police and being brutal, yeah. murder or, or beaten up. So people just kind of, at, at the end, you, sur you surrender. You're like, okay, we... You know, they just surrender to this big, um, violent government. Yeah. So I guess the other question I would ask then is, how was a lot of this possible in the sense that taking control and slowly uh, taking power? In our country, we have a lot of separation of powers and we have freedom of speech and freedom of media coverage. And we have all these institutions that that essentially the power is distributed across the board in various ways so that it's not essentially centralized in one a dictator, right? Right. And so were those things, did any of that exist in Venezuela? Um, or were those missing components that made this uh, more likely to happen and actually easier to, to execute? Right, yeah. I talk a lot about in my book about this because I made I do make a comparison uh, in, in America, it does have a uh, equilibrium of powers. In Venezuela, the president was a bigger um, celebrity, if you will, if it had a much yeah. more power than the rest. Uh, also, um, you know, the economy of the U.S. is so diversified that I, I recently uh, knew or, or read that the small industry is the, the one that sustains um, the economy. Most of the economy is sustained by the small, in a great proportion. Yeah. By, yeah. uh, this month, the industry. So a lot of entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. Um, in Venezuela, no, the economy was sustained by the oil and mm. that was state government run. Yeah. Um, so All their eggs in also, one basket. Yeah. Right. Also, uh, there's a big component of uh, the lack of, uh, that I write a lot about in my book, the lack of pat patriotism in Venezuela. Okay. Um, Venezuela didn't have, uh, you know, respect for the flag or the children were not taught something like, like you have here. Um, there's like not God bless America song. Um, there was none of that. So people weren't like, they weren't necessarily proud to be a Venezuelan. Is that kind of the heart of it? 
right they were not proud or grateful they, uh-huh they were they were never taught to be okay they were never taught about their founders yeah yeah simon bolivar was like the big hero but but there was not that patriotism seed in the in the children's minds in the children's heart okay and like here you know you celebrate the fourth of july you celebrate as a family in venezuela we had parades military parades mm -hmm. and people would not by law could not wear their own uh, flag for example the colors of the oh, okay so you could have and go to prison you could have gone to prison if you if you just wore you know mm. a flag oh okay wow um, so and that you, you know you would say well those th doesn't make any sense but th those are so important when people love their country and they're you know willing to fight for their country and and respect their their symbols you know the flag the, the songs the the the, the, yeah. the the yeah the symbols so for example a feast like thanksgiving uh we didn't have that a feast mm. like thanksgiving it's non-religious you know per yeah. se but it's celebrated by the whole country it unites the whole country uh, okay we have none of that so we in a way were divided already and when mm. the chavez came caused more aggression and division um also the religion uh there was a, you know people were not practicing their religion I see that, for example, here in the States, at least the South is more religious and, you know, they bound by their religious yeah. mandates, you know, the, 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 the commandments. Um, that, you know, that's something that it's different. It's different here. Um, I don't know if I'm, you know, answering your question. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, 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 I, I think that you're, you're giving some examples of what was lacking there but let's say they there was patriotism in Venezuela. Were, were there other things missing too that it still could have happened? It still would have happened. Private uh, uh, pri uh, rights of property. I mean, private private mm. private rights. Um, there were no uh, no ways to you know to do. Uh, there were it was not such an easy way of, for you to own, create your own company uh it was uh, there were more regulations there so yeah freedom. the way you described it earlier was they made it really hard to do business there after right it was, and it was so very then they hard. could control the ones that were there and then they didn't have new people right. coming into the market to change things yeah and once they cripple the economy um people are very very much uh like they have to like shut up you know shut their mouth because you know they depend on 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 a job on the, on the government they depend yeah. on public uh position in you know in in, in the government uh, uh yeah. office and they or they if they're really poor they depend on the bag of food that the government gives yeah them. and then they're more dependent on the government than they even were before and i guess so if if they were so dependent on oil you know Amer when america became uh we started getting our own oil and stopped buying it from around the world was that a big factor if we were buying a lot of it from Venezuela? Uh, no, actually, the, the, what, the, the funny or interesting thing is that Chavez will talk so bad about the U.S. Yeah. But still, there were, he was getting the, the revenues from the oil. I mean, yeah. he still he was in the main, you know, the U.S. was the main client. So it was all, you know, it was this connection between what he would say and he, how, how he would act right yeah uh it was yeah. a total disconnection so in the u.s part you know i i believe um about the, the same amount of oil um and he was they were getting revenues from other people but from other countries but i think the prices was what really affected all, at all mm. and uh and also the fact that because he didn't invest in the oil industry uh when i left uh when i left uh, there were projects to improve um and there are refineries yeah um and those were stopped because of chavez so the refineries were getting so old that mm. they were not producing you know they didn't have they were falling system. behind they were falling yeah. behind so and now they're really far yeah behind. and it's hard to catch up too it's yeah hard to catch up yeah it's hard mm. to catch up but the promises and the and the and the social programs kept on going and kept on you know he kept on deceiving. yeah 
Yeah. So you, you wrote this book um, to kind of make sense of what happened and to help you kind of understand it. You know, when you kind of look at the whole story and and take a step back, you know, what, what are your takeaways um, just about what happened? Uh, Right. That people were ignorant about what uh, communism really is or was or Mm -hmm. has been, you know, hasn't worked. Uh, It hasn't worked anywhere, Uh, but it has been so powerful. uh, we we thought we were done with the, after the second world the, the the whole war. We thought we were done. We had a uh, we had uh, beaten communism, and we never did. I don't mm. think we we haven't ever done. The ideas are still strong there, uh, and they have infiltrated themselves in media. Uh, they have infiltrated themselves in Hollywood in in the culture, um, and and people are being deceived uh, about socialism and, and equality and and all these ideas that really sound so ideal mm-hmm. and so not, I mean they sound so nice yeah. and they pull on people's emotions emo- yeah. emotion. and that's another takeaway uh, Venezuela um, uh, I remember uh, when the oil industry was fighting against Chavez basically and wanted to kind of keep being the, the, the good company that they were they were trying to explain people, the engineers were trying to explain people what was going on, you know, yeah. the, giving the data on the economics, blah, blah, blah. But people could not understand. They were being pulled by the, this psychopath, you know, clever yeah. psychopath, by their emotional uh, strengths. And, mm-hmm. and, and it was motion, the emotions they, you know, um, the left, it's very clever at pulling people with emotions and images and appearances. And, and they can be deceiving. And that's why, that's why many, many people don't understand that really they're psychopaths. They're, they're just deceiving people, very, very, with a lot of charisma, you know, very yeah. well, with a very nice uh, speeches, uh, very well dressed. They are yeah. deceiving people uh, and selling the ideas that, yeah, they're not true, that go against human mm-hmm. nature. So, how do you? how do you deal with a psychopath? You run away. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yes, this uh, Robert here, is, I think is the, the name he said, he says the best way to deal with a psychopath is to run away. And it's very difficult to spy, spy, spot them or, yeah. or recognize them because they're so good. They're very basically actors. Uh, but I, I just, I would just advise people not to, to pay attention so much of what leaders or politicians say but what how you know the actions the the real mm. actions what are they doing yeah what they're doing and what has been their history you know their 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 yeah. their, their, their records um if if only people had stopped and, and realized you know that chavez you know his his record he he wouldn't have been he wouldn't yeah. have happened. It, he, wouldn't he, have he, he he it wasn't um hidden information it was just people didn't want to look there or they ignored it or they looked they the other way ignored it. yeah they they were yeah duped uh, yeah. and and once you fall into that trap it's just it, there's really hasn't been i mean we have tried so many ways the legalistic way elections it, it, it there has been any way because they it, they are based they arrived into power with lies and they're the whole they stay in power through rep- repression yeah to violence and there's no other way to get them out but yeah. to violence. Uh, mm. it, it's like, it's, it's very much lies image over truth. Mm. So let's, let's shift points of view here and let's talk about the United States. Um, you know, we've been for the last uh, four years, it's been pretty politically divisive, or at least it seems that way because we, we have more access to media. Um, and we're more inter- interactive through social media um, directly in ways we had before. But even before that, there was probably stuff brewing. Um, so it's hard to tell if it's escalating, but this certainly feels that way. Um, and then the pandemic hits and it seems like all kinds of social uh, unrest in our country, you know, with you know, the black community and racism and police uh, brutality and, and then that kind of bubbled up other societal issues and and then all of a sudden you got rioting and and statues being torn out it's just 
all of these things sort of unfolding ra rather rapidly. So as that's, as this is unfolded, you know, how, what's been your point of view on this? How, how have you seen it? How have you interpreted it? Um, what, what concerns you? What, what, ins what um, gives you inspiration or hope? <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> so let's, yeah, let's uh, talk about that. I, uh, I'm very, I'm very troubled. I'm very, uh, uh, concerned, uh, because it kind of, the division, uh, that we, uh, that we're having, it's kind of similar to the division that, that the Venezuelan experience and still experience. And it, the problem is that it doesn't get any better. It gets always, it gets worse. Mm. Um, um, I'm also ex seeing the collectivism, you know, as I said, if you, you need to think one way and if you you think different, uh, so, so you're, you know, you're disliked or you're yeah. shame or you're fire or you're, uh, so that's very troubling because really I came, I came to the U.S. just in love with the idea of freedom of speech, even mm, before Chavez. The liberty, yeah. The liberty, the freedom uh, to, to do business, to be better, to whatever. Um, so this collectivism, it's, it's so damaging. I, I, I think we're just, disrespecting the, the, the individualism and the freedom of every individual that has the, you know, it's valuable and has dignity by itself. Uh, it doesn't matter which ethnicity group that you belong to. It doesn't matter which social class you belong to. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is a country that when I arrived here in the nineties, Michael Jackson was, you know, one of the main figures, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, if not, you know, from the world, I mean, who, who didn't know Michael Jackson? Who didn't yeah. know Michael Jackson? Then Oprah Winfrey was the 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 spoke you know the most influential person on TV you know yeah. Oprah Winfrey uh, and and I can name other you know black actors or or singers or or personalities and so you know uh, uh, this the, the deterioration of 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 America as I knew it it's just it's very troubling it's not. Uh, people say, no, I don't recognize America. Well, that's what happened to Venezuelans. Like we go back or even years ago, we, I couldn't recognize Venezuela. It wasn't the, the place that I grew up mm. uh, anymore. It just changed completely. I also see what I call in my book, the, the revolution of history. Um, people okay. trying to alter the history. Well, hello, history, just history. I mean, it, it just, we cannot change it. We cannot change it. Um, we learn from from the past, but really we cannot move, you know, change anything from the past. Yeah. So this wanting to change history or just wanting to condemn, uh, you know, certain events or or pers or, or, or personalities uh, with our criteria, with our vision of reality, it's 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 ridiculous. No, I mean things happen in the past where and they have other circumstances and they didn't have the technology and the wisdom that we have. So we yeah. just learn from history. Um, and, and this promises of the better future that we're going to be, we're going to be better in the future. If we follow this and we do that, uh, I, I don't think, I think it's very deceiving. It's almost like Chavez talking, you know, again, saying we're going to be, we're going to be, we're going to hold hands and, love each other ever, you know forever and ever it's not true it's it's really it's really a very emotional and it's really the desires that we all want but i guess you know in heaven we'll, we'll find that, right? <laughs> yeah. that peace and that love you know loving each other um so yeah those are very very uh troubling signs that we're not on the right path um that that we need to go back to our roots our traditions uh, the founders um, uh, in, in the, in the ma main ideas that every human has his own dignity and we need to respect each other. And if yeah. you think different from me, you know, I, I, I'll listen to you and I respect you, but I don't have to attack you or. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess what's, um, we're in the middle of this and, and w most of us don't necessarily have the experience or the kind of the picture that and journey story that you have. We're going through it for the first time and perhaps you're, so right. what would you, what would you advise us? How do we look at it? How do we think about it? How should we respond? That's a very good question, Jason, because I, I, I do really not know how to, um, 
act myself. Uh, like with, I have a lot of information and I have a lot of experience, but I don't know if uh, we are beyond the, the tipping point. You know, we I think uh, this is like a river. Uh, yeah. it, it, it is a river, it's very strong. Uh, it's gonna take a lot of people with, with it. Um, and so I don't know if um, we can stop it in a way, you know, individually, I wish I could. Uh, I wrote the, my book um, because I, I do think there's a lot of ignorance in terms of what happened and in the past and and a lot of data even was raised, you know, even from in the internet, there's there's a lot of things that were raised by, by the, the left. Uh, I don't know, I just feel that we have to be prayerful, uh, uh, live day, one day at a time, try to protect your, your assets, whatever you have. Um, and just uh, hang on tight uh, because I do think they might come, you know, they might come some difficult days uh, for America. Yeah. And, and it may get harder before it gets better is what right. I, I think you're saying, right? Right. I, I just, you know, if you're Christian, just hang on to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would advise. <laughs> that with, and we're a part of a larger kingdom that, that transcends any nation rising or falling, right? Right, right. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would say as a whole for note um, that, you know, Venezuelans right now are, are living like very high inflation. They have, they don't have uh, the resources or th that, you know, we have right here, right now and right here. Um, but they still, they still live and they yeah. still fall in love, get married. Yeah. Um, they still have parties. They celebrate uh, birthdays. I mean, and the same goes with Cuba. So even if uh, we get to that point. Yeah, life goes on. <laughs> yeah, life goes on and it's going to be okay. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. So what would be some things, what are some specific things that you're seeing or that we could be looking for that we can, if we are in a, in a role or a place to push back or to challenge it or to engage, what would be some of those areas? Um. I would say support uh, your 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 freedom or, or or stand for your freedom in in the way best way you can. Like I'm working for the Foundation for Economic Education, they're supporting free market, and they're they're working with young people. Uh, I guess that the 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 hope is in the in the youth, um, and, mm. and and the youth is very uh, uh, influence. You can influence the youth very easily. So I think they just need knowledge and information and just read a lot, yeah. uh, read a lot about history. You know, what happened in the past with, uh, with Russia, with Cuba, uh, read a lot of, you know, how the, the U.S. became a nation. Uh, like I, I, I read uh, recently the, the, the history of, of, of America, you know, what happened. And, and it just enlightened me so much. I mean, you have to really read yeah. history. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and that that kind of ties into one of the, one of the ways out of this. Um, it, not one of many ways. It's not the it's not a silver bullet, but I, I think mentoring, like you're describe, describing, we have to be sharing life with other people. We have to be discipling and mentoring others, and also learning from from them as well. So, and I, and that's got to be an ongoing thing, and it's got to be we all got to play a part in that, right? We can't right. just expect that um, somebody else is going to do it, right? <laughs> right, right. And, and, and when I talk about history, I also include the Bible, right? Because yeah. Yeah, we need to, we need to, what happened back then, it was, it, they were even, you know, there were harder times than what we're living right now. Yeah. So we, and is, do you find that, go ahead. Uh, well, no, I say, do you, that we need to uh, share that information with the, the young, the children, yeah. the, young, the young people. Well, and I think as, as Christians, um, you know, do you find that it's helpful to understand that you all, it, it is challenging season for, for our experience of, of life. When you look at history, it's, it's been pretty bad. It's and so even bad. as bad as it feels now, it's, it's a, a lot better than it was. <laughs> <laughs> at least we have a uh, running water, electricity and internet. Yeah. We can connect via Zoom. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. So taking it, being appreciative of those. So I guess what, what parting words of wisdom, any, any final thoughts that you would have for us as we close this out? 
Um, yeah, let's reject socialism. Uh, socialism, it's not for America. America was built uh, uh, with the, as a land of freedom. Uh, so yeah. let's support and, and cherish and, and pray that we keep our, our freedoms uh, to, uh, to socialize, to make business, to, to pray. Um, this is a, a beautiful land uh, where, you know, full of immigrants, they came here just to to live the dream you know uh, yeah and 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 there's so much to offer and there's so much to 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 uh to create and promote and we cannot really uh entertain ideas yeah. that are not americans like mm -hmm. socialism or communism yeah well, thank you so much for uh, sharing your thoughts, Ariana. Um, if people want to connect with you, uh, what's the best way for them to do that? How can they find you online? Yes, uh, I would love to uh, for to connect through LinkedIn. Uh, okay. My, my name is Sorayana, S O R A Y A N A, Bravo B R A V O, or I can be also reach us Sorayana Bravo at gmail dot com. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, LinkedIn or Gmail, and then your book is also on Amazon if they want to pick Amazon. it up. Although you have to. Speaking, or you got to read uh, Spanish if you want to check it out. Right, um, right. But, no, it, Spanish. <laughs> but it, when you get the English version, we'll, we'll, let, we'll put that link on there. But we'll put the link to the Spanish version for now. And uh, any, any other, any, anything else you're doing online or that's worth uh, noting? Uh, uh, the Foundation for Economic Education, I, I really recommend it. They have uh, very good articles and videos that really support these ideas of free market and, and freedom. And, Okay, so cool. I, I would refer them to that to their event. Um, right, well, thank you, Jason, for the invitation. This was great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you.